everybody, how you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Joel. I'm Grandpa. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Matt. And we're some of the veggie boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you guys for stopping by. Good morning, good morning. And how are we doing in here today? Looking pretty good. Welcome back everyone, it's so nice to see you. As you just saw, Joel and I got the eggs all collected and that was the last thing we needed to do when it comes to the animals this morning. So that means the chickens are all taken care of, the calves were all fed, and all the other cattle were fed as well. Now I wanted to show you what we have going on in greenhouse number six. Now this is technically not the cafeteria. That would be greenhouse number five but we have got this whole side of the greenhouse full of our little makeshift calf pens and all the calves are looking really really good now as many of you know we get all of our calves from local dairy farmers basically when they have calves ready for us what they'll do is they'll give us a call and then we run and pick them up now a big question we get is why do we keep all the calves in their own little separate pens and that's mainly for their safety. If one of the calves was to get sick, we don't want them all to get sick. And also something else that's very important to us when those calves are by themselves, we can monitor how much they eat. So we can tell if a calf is not eating enough, uh, we can make sure that they're getting plenty of food. I just wanted to show you guys that we are starting to move calves into the greenhouse with the winter months coming. Uh, it's a lot easier for us to take care of our calves when they're inside these greenhouses. And if for some reason it's going to get extremely cold, we can always turn the heaters on, which is a big bonus to us. We've got all of our chores taken care of for the day. The farm market's been set up for quite some time. So we're just about ready to get moving on to other jobs. Now what is going on up here? What are you doing? I am pricing out stacks because people love stacking pumpkins these days. As you guys can see here, we've got a lot of stacks made up. Uh, we were just fooling around one day and we started stacking pumpkins up here and then customers loved it They started buying the whole stacks and what we learned by fooling around is one that people love the stacked pumpkins And two some people just don't like digging through the bins and picking out all of their stuff So we always put a few stacks on these tables and if people want them they can pick them up and take them Well everyone I got the first job out in the field today. I need to cut some broccoli when I walked into the farm market, dad said he needed a basket of broccoli. I'm not sure if it was for an order or if it was just for the farm market, but I'm going to get it harvested. I want to share with you guys what we're looking for as we're harvesting broccoli. As I'm going out through the field, the first thing I will notice is the size of the broccoli. And that's one of the most important things. We don't want to be taking back uh, small heads of broccoli for our customer. So as we're going out through, we're looking for a nice head of broccoli, but also that it's a tight head of broccoli. As broccoli gets older and older, the head will start to loosen and we don't want that. Uh, it does start to affect the flavor and when it starts to loosen, that means the broccoli is going to seed, which we do not want that. So as we're going out through the broccoli, those are kind of the things that we are looking for. And that helps us to determine whether we're going to cut the broccoli or leave it. Now, After we finish harvesting our broccoli, what we do is we take all of the outer leaves off. Uh, some people do like to eat the outer leaves. We have found in our local area uh, that people don't really like eating them too much. But you'll also notice we do leave a little bit of extra stem. Uh, that actually is something people in our area do eat. If you've never tried eating the stem of broccoli, it tastes basically just the same as the broccoli. Um, and you can cook it right in with your broccoli. But that's something we found. So what we like to do with the leaves is we throw them back onto the ground and basically use them as a compost for stuff that we'll be planting here later on. Now all we need to do is get this stuff back to the farm. 
Now that we're done with harvesting broccoli, we're moving on to our next job, digging potatoes. But as you can see, we have no tractor hooked up to the large digger. And that's because we've ran into another issue uh, trying to get this engine started. We do have the issue lined up to be taken care of, but it is frustrating because it would be a lot easier to dig potatoes with this machine than the way we're gonna dig them today. But we're not gonna complain. We're fortunate to have potatoes in a year like this. Now dad and Joel got out here a little bit earlier on, so they have already started picking up potatoes. Now as you can see, we are digging red potatoes and the variety is called Chieftain. Now it's a little harder to tell right now because some of them are dirty, but these Chieftain red potatoes look really nice. And even in a dry year, what we're dealing with right now, the potatoes are getting some nice size to them. But now it's time for everybody's favorite job, picking potatoes up off the ground. Now, if you guys are not up to date on potato technology, uh, the machine we are using to harvest these potatoes is called a windrower. And I know because I had to ask Joel. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it is taking all of the potatoes and rocks, you know, plenty of rocks, and putting them onto a narrow pile that we are then gonna go through and pick. It is a little easier than just digging them onto the ground scattered all over the place, but it's not as easy as using the machine but we got to do what we got to do if you get down here further there won't be as many rocks i noticed yeah it left this little calf pen and was out with the big cows down over the hill now, as you guys can see we do have quite a few rocks right here but as we keep moving down through the field, like the other end, uh, there's a lot less rocks. So we just have to deal with them a little bit for right now, but as we move along, there won't be near as many. And that will make picking them up off the ground a little bit easier because we won't have to pick through any of the rocks that are here on the ground. I am starting to see a few potatoes with a little more size, which I wasn't expecting. Um, we didn't have much rain this year, as you guys know, and that really helps put some size on the potatoes. But what we are finding looks good and we'll be happy with whatever we get. Now an interesting thing about potatoes is they need a lot of fertilizer. Um, now what we had planted here previously was sweet corn. As a matter of fact, the year before uh, when a hurricane went through, it knocked over all the sweet corn that was here. However, before the sweet corn was planted here, uh, we had clover. And what clover does is it adds nitrogen into the soil. So what we're trying to do is always add nitrogen into the soil any way we can. And one of the best ways we can do that is by planting clover. And ultimately, planting clover here two plantings ago helps these potatoes. So as farmers, what we're trying to do 
is be two, three, four, five steps ahead so that we can always continuously benefit the next crop we're gonna plant and the soil that we have. Now with a lot of the crops that we raise here on the farm, we do plantings. Uh, that way everything's not ready to harvest all at the same time. As if all your vegetables are ready to harvest at the same time, it can put quite a bit of stress on you. So uh, we do the same thing with potatoes. We have plantings. Now the variety I'm picking, this is an earlier variety than the variety right behind me. This is the variety we were picking earlier. This variety is called Red Norland. Now the only difference between my variety and the variety they're picking is th these get ready earlier on, so you don't get the larger potatoes. Normally you would harvest these potatoes a little earlier than the other ones, but at this point in the year, we're just trying to get all of the red potatoes out of the ground, so we harvested them together. I don't know if all my viewers raise potatoes, but if you do, you always gotta select a variety that you really like to pick and you like the size of the potatoes. Now it's a little different with the red potatoes. We are taking a lot of the smaller ones uh, because we sell those as creamer potatoes. Uh, throughout the year, I don't remember what part of the year, but potatoes this size, a box of them, was selling for $100 a box. So these are very valuable to people that want them. Well, everyone, that does it for the morning. It's a lunch time. The girls let us know back at the farm. So we're gonna head back and eat. We did pretty well for the morning. We got three bins of potatoes picked up off the ground. And as you can see, they look really nice. Well, everyone, as you can see, we really grew some nice potatoes there. And as you guys have seen in the past, we can grow some really nice stuff on the farm. But one thing we can't grow without your help is this YouTube channel. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, one of the best ways you can help us grow is by liking the video. Now we are on our way back for lunch, but we got to make a quick detour before we head back. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Oh, wow. You need help putting that down? Got it. <laughs> that is a big boy. Oh, that's heavy. Now, if you guys remember, uh, we planted these pumpkins on the mulch that the peppers were on last year. And the reason why we did that was so that we could irrigate these. And well, just by looking at them, I think that was a good idea. Well, everyone, for lunch today, it looks like we are having subs, and I couldn't be more happier. I love having subs. And, Grammy, what did you make today? Tandy cakes. Oh, my word. How many more do we need? <laughs> Not many more. So now this afternoon, we're going to be out here picking some Cubanelles. Uh, Andrew's editing, so he made me take the camera. There you have it, one whole bin of Cubanel peppers ready to take back to the market. Lunchbox peppers. These taste any good? I don't eat them. You don't eat them? Why are we picking them then? Because if you start eating them, then you'll be eating them and you won't be picking. Oh. So I never start eating. I have that problem. So these are called lunchbox peppers and they're small, but very, very sweet peppers. We sell a lot of these back at the farm market. There we go, one basket of lunchbox peppers, well, three quarters of a basket. Help! Dad keeps putting cauliflower in my arms. Thank you. Is that only four heads? It felt like more. I think you're just weak. <laughs> so we're out here in our field of coal crops and we're gonna try and pick a bin of cauliflower. We may not get a bin, but we're gonna go through and pick everything that's ready. So that way nothing gets uh, too far gone on us and then ends up not being usable later.
So we got about a half a bin of uh, cauliflower. We uh, walk through this every every day or so because it grows pretty fast. But uh, we got some pretty nice stuff here. It looks really nice. Cauliflower is kind of hard to raise. Doesn't like warm weather. Likes lots of water. So that's why it comes in in the fall. We always plant cauliflower for the spring, but over the summer we just never get nice stuff. But the fall stuff always seems to do much better. And there's a couple different kinds of cauliflower. There's some that's called self-wrapping. Uh, we like to raise some of that. Uh, that's where the leaves wrap around the cauliflower and keep it nice and white. Uh, there's also a cauliflower, regular cauliflower that you plant that you have to tie the leaves up. Uh, we simply do that with just putting a rubber band around the leaves and blow it up. The reason you do that is so that the sun doesn't get to it. It turns the cauliflower yellow. We try to keep it white. Hey everyone, I'm back. I had some editing that I needed to do, so I went up to the house. I saw they were able to get some stuff picked and it looked like there was quite a few customers down here. Just got everything put away in the farm market and now we're on our way up to the house. Well everyone, we've made it up to the house for dinner tonight. We have some mashed potatoes. There's turnips there. Uh, we have some carrots. And then in here are some stuffed peppers. Now it's gonna be a little light at the dinner table tonight. We're gonna be missing some people. My mom is going with a friend to the local fair and my wife, she's out shopping for clothes for Callie. Can you believe that? Callie needs clothes. It's almost like she's getting big or something. So while I have you here, I might as well end the video. I would like to thank everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye 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 bye